What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, ho, Happy ho, Kwanzaa, ho, 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 ho. and Happy, happy Belated Hanukkah. Because now I yes. believe Hanukkah's been done for a little while now. I think so. I think that's, that sounds accurate. I'm Andrea Renee. That's Christine Steimer, and of course, in the lovely pink sweater is Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello, guys. Or should I say, Miss Brittany and Christine Steinbacher? Yes. Oh my God. We have fused into one. <laughs> we are one unit now. So when we were at the Game Awards earlier this month, when I went to go pick up the tickets with Brittany, they couldn't find Christine's ticket because we were going to use it to give to somebody else, the, a friend of ours that was going to come because unfortunately Steimer was at a work event. I was working. Um, and they couldn't find the ticket. And then they were like, wait, what outlet are you with? Wait, what's the name? And then finally, by reason of deduction, they bring over an envelope that says Christine Steinbacher oh on it. Oh my God. And I was like, they clearly merged Brittany and <laughs> Simon's names together. And it's perfect because Simon and I have this master plan that I'm going to, how do I put this nicely, dispose of my husband. Yes. And then Simon and I are going to move into my house and yes. then we're just going to live a life full of animals and it's going to be a lovely existence. I'm <laughs> going to dispose of my husband? <laughs> Sorry, babe. know that this is happening? I, yeah, yeah, actually, I think we've talked about we, it. We've told him. Uh, and he's just like, And he doesn't okay. take it seriously, which no. is going to be his downfall. I mean, but yeah, that's like fine. he really should not underestimate us. Yeah. Because like we're weird. It was, this was right? a sign. Exactly. This was a sign from the Game Award gods that we were meant to be I together. I mean, I think it was. Yeah. The universe was like, you need to hurry this plan up. Yeah, exactly. Do you well, feel left out? No, no, I'm good. She's uh, like, I don't want to be a Steinbacher. Right. I will come. <laughs> Listen, I had one terrible maiden name. That's all that I need. I, I like Drake. It's a great easy name. Everybody knows how to say it and spell it. And it's a baby dragon. Exactly. See, there you go. Okay. I mean, I think Steinbacher sounds um, fucking I will badass. come and visit the Steinbacher Palace, though. Ooh, we okay. Can oh, yeah, Steinbacher girl. We got a palace. Estate. Yeah. Estate. Yeah. I like his state. Steinbacher better. Manor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, it'll be We're great. going to have lions outside of our house. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Made of marble. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, we love that you guys are here. As you can probably tell, we are recording this episode in advance because it is the holiday week and we are off doing things with family and friends like we hope that you guys are as well. But it is that time of year where we bring back the now second annual What's Good Game <laughs> Awards. So because it is the final week of the year, hopefully you've had enough time to play most of the games that we're talking about. We will reserve some spoilery talk for a little bit later in the show and we'll give you fair warning once we do get into that part but just so you know there will be some light spoilers i would say mm -hmm. if you're one of those purists that can't see anything about a game before you play it just be warned that we'll be talking about the biggest games and some of the not biggest games of the year that were our favorites in our annual awards so we were talking about it like do we want to bring back the categories from last year? And we agreed, yeah, those were dang good categories. Why would we not use them again? <laughs> um, so we are going to be using the same category system. Did we say we were changing or adding anything? I think we we can just keep it the way it is. We'll just I keep it. Yeah. It's we, fine. It's last easiest. year when we did these, we did talk about adding additional categories. But because we pulled this together so last minute, I think we should just stick with what we have. And these are really good categories. Well, if something inspires us on the fly during this journey, yes, yes. we will address that as it comes up. But um, before we get to that, I just want to say how much everybody listening and watching the show means to us. It's been an awesome year for What's Good Games. We've got so many brand new listeners who have never heard of What's Good Games before that found us this year, which we're really excited about. We also want to give a special thank you and shout out to everyone who's been with us since day one of, of last year. We're really looking forward to 2019 and to bringing some you know, more content to you guys and new experiences, hopefully more meet and greets and things like that where we get to get out in the community and talk to you. We had the amazing opportunity to see some people at several events this year looking back at PAX East and PAX West. RTX. RTX. E3. A lot of Comic Con. Yeah. 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 It was a really exciting, fun year. And I just want to say thank you so much for everything. You guys are wonderful. And um, yeah. We all echo that. You nailed it. I can't Thanks. even add anything to it. <laughs> well, wonderful. Um, all right. So why don't we, without further ado, get into 
the What's Good Game Awards 2018. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. So, Brittany, you have the master list. Master list. I do have that. All right. The first category, Game of the Most Sleepless Nights. So, obviously, which game kept you going into the wee, wee hours of the morning? Yeah, so this last or the yeah, last year was I think Horizon Zero Dawn was the mm-hmm. was the one for me. Um I'm trying to think of this year cuz I don't I think it was probably God of War. I think that was the only one that I really like super got into to the point where I was willing to screw up my sleep schedule for it. Um And you were sick on top of it. And I was sick. Well, that so not the beginning of God oh, of yeah, War. Right, the right. beginning of God of War, we all know was a <laughs> It's a bit of a trek this game's for me. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> hey, you made me do the show. I was super sick, <laughs> and that's what you're gonna get from me. So good. I'm just like, this is the only energy I have for you. Um, but uh, I think that. So yeah, I think. Did you guys have anything else that you can like? So, were you like super into Monster Hunter to the point where you were like staying up all night or no? Monster Hunter wasn't that game for me. Last year it was Paragon for me. Um, rip in peace. Um, but <laughs> this year for me, there was kind of a, a two contenders. First contender with no surprise, Destiny 2 with Forsaken launching in September. It really reinvigorated the West Coast Guardian client. Guardians clan I can talk um, in a really exciting way and they've really added a lot more ways to play and with so many of the clan mates in different time zones I think a lot of us have just found ourselves up you know raiding or doing you know exotic quest lines and really fun group activities in Destiny 2 but the game the solo game that I really was just like just one more quest just one more was Assassin's Creed Odyssey for mm. sure mm. oh yeah there's just so much to do in that beautiful open world of Greece and it's just the siren call to use a, a, an appropriate term here is was just really really well done and it didn't feel like busy work even though obviously a lot of it was yeah it really I wanted to spend more time in that world and I still want to spend more time in that world I haven't done nearly enough I haven't even like thought about checking out the first DLC that came out not that long ago but but yeah those were the games for me Last year, mine was Divinity Original Sin 2. Oh, sorry. No surprise. Um, this year, I would say Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, obviously, that map is huge, and there's yeah. a lot to see and a lot to do in that game. And I feel like you're always encouraged because you never know what you're going to see or what you're going to do. a lot to do in that game? Yeah, but it's like all <laughs> random encounters there we go. and shit. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it depends. I guess it depends on how you define Yeah, random encounters. And to me, I like finding, uncovering fog of war. And that, to me, that's something that I like to do. That's a thing to do in that game. Or go hunting or go fishing, doing all that kind of stuff. And just kind of getting lost in that world. And then the other one was Kingdom Come Deliverance. And this was a game that I talked about a lot early on in this year. And I really liked it. It it was super immersive, super realistic. But the problem was it just got plagued by too many bugs as they implemented more and more patches. It broke something else. But um, I it's think it's... a problem it's, with game development, man. Yeah, man. And then the save system. Anyway, we don't have to go down that road. But I want to revisit that one, actually, because that yeah. was a really good one. And I'm sad it didn't get any nods at the Game Awards, but that was to be expected. Yeah. The Red Dead, I think, would have been for me. But mm-hmm. so I think the one of the reasons why God of War ended up being like the one that I was willing to sort of mess up my sleep schedule for was also because of like where I was just in life. Like I had a different job then I, you know, my schedule was a little different. It wasn't as strenuous. Um, but now I'm just like, I need to go to bed. Like I, like I have to go to sleep. <laughs> like I have to, I'm much stricter with myself on games in general. So I think if, if Red Dead had come out, you know, when I had again, my other job, I think, I think I probably would have stayed up a lot later playing mm-hmm. it, but and it's mostly just like oh, it's it's for me. I th- I find winding down with Red Dead to be nice. Like it's like ah oh. yeah, because you're not rushed to do anything. It's yes, take your time with everything. It's very nice. Next category: best villain. So this one was something that I great. I have not beaten this game, so maybe Andrew will be like, "You're stupid," and that's not correct. But I I think um, Celeste is an interesting one here because like you're kind mm-hmm. of battling yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Interesting. Uh-huh. And so like, I think that what better villain than you? Because like, I think we are all kind of our own worst enemies. Yes, 100%. In, in, in life in general. And man, um, that one, there's that one level where she chases you and it is the worst. Yeah. Oh, man. So I think it's, an, I think that, I don't, I just don't think you can get better than that. <laughs> like no matter how much character development or whatever you do, I think everyone can relate to having negative self thoughts and just like, mm-hmm your own internal demons and trying to overcome those. I think for, okay. 
is it can i talk about the villain of rdr2 because the ah, no. no okay <laughs> dang okay so because that's like super deep in the story yeah i think it's just if you kn- yeah 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 okay um that i mean like i'm like at like 70 percent story completion and it's just barely like it's just getting there you, so that's that's a, that's a hard no I, if you want to talk about you that can, you can shelve no, no, it no, what i'm gonna say to you right, just right. say i pick that game and then like i picked the villain of that game <laughs> um yeah i guess that's all i can really say that's fair. i still thought mr negative was interesting in spider-man i'm not super mm. familiar with the spider-man lore and so i did not see all, any of that coming and i thought that was interesting how that oh, character really? Is. I thought I was like I saw that immediately. Granted, I didn't. I actually don't know a lot about that particular character right. of Spider Man. I know a few of the other ones, right? Um, but just the way that uh, they present people sometimes, you're like, oh, they're evil. Yeah, that, this person is <laughs> too tele- good to be true. They telegraph it yeah, really hard yeah. in superhero games. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised neither of you immediately thought of the father, Joseph C. I, for I me have him right like, here too. That's my next. It's like definitely like the most grotesque villain that I can recall playing in a game this year, just because of the way that they treat the people in that world. I mean, Far Cry is known for their really like over the top um, evil villains. Mm -hmm. And this one, I don't know why this one felt a little bit more terrible. Maybe it's because it's like a little incestuous because they're like a family and there's this pretense that they're good and that they're saving people and they're bringing religion into it. Mm -hmm. But really they're a cult. They're really more of like a gang and they're, rounding people up and it's just it was just really poignant in a way that i i thought was well done and made me truly hate the seed family they were this is he wasn't my first choice but i agree that he's a really messed up the whole family's just fucked up yeah i would and i i wish though i didn't think i don't think far cry 5 did a really great job at expanding upon those those villains i thought i think there's a lot of depth there that just wasn't touched upon i think all we know is that he's this crazy cult leader and that's interesting i think there's a lot of layers to him but we didn't actually get to see him grow as a villain if that makes sense no, well, yeah. apparently you're going to get to in Far Cry New Dawn. Yeah. I guess so watch that. How shitty of that was that he just like spoiled that on stage. <laughs> I was like, yo, oh, I, I even see. yelled out spoilers in the audience. Yeah. I was like, so they announced Far Cry New Dawn on yeah. stage at the Game Awards uh, this month. And they talked about what happens at the end of Far Cry mm-hmm. 5. And mm-hmm. I never finished the final mission. Oh, really? And, and not that like I was going to be like, oh, spoilers, but like. I like having a conversation about it on a show like What's Good Games is different than announcing it on stage at a major award show. Yeah. Right? Like you wouldn't just announce the end of a movie that came out that year on stage at the Oscars, right? right. Like, yeah, it would be a little weird. They're yeah. probably like, we gotta move on from this one. Let's so yeah, so I didn't get to watch most of the game awards because again, I was at an event, I was in an arena and like there's the internet was cutting in and out or whatever. So like I, I could watch like bits and pieces of it. I missed the Far Cry announcement. Mm-hmm. So I actually haven't seen this trailer, but uh, for check me, it out. the um, the seed family <laughs> initially seemed very interesting, and then I lost interest throughout it because they just, again, I think what Brittany was going back to, they didn't to me flesh them out in a way that they felt real. They just felt like cartoon villains in a in a video game to me, and especially with a lot of the way that they that you do the missions. Uh, or it's not even like you don't get to choose them. They just kind of come after you whenever you're basically like hit by one of the three other seed f- members. Um, and they kind of like kidnap you or whatever <laughs> all the fucking time. It's, they should have just called it far cry, the kidnapping. <laughs> and that's fair. It's that fair. All of those things. You're like, am I doped up? What's going on? Does, like, the way that they made the mis- missions, none of it felt like anything more than a video game to me. So mm-hmm. like they really weren't best villains in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. Okay, that's next fine. category. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna dismantle your guys' picks, but that's cool. Next category. <laughs> oh, shit, uh, she's feeling defensive. The next <laughs> next category. Oh, bitch, you, I'm gonna come for you now. Oh, you just wait. No. Every god of I'm not every surly god of today. You better be careful. Oh my god, Sorry. no, it's I love I didn't you. Mean it like that. Just saying for me. I didn't think that was, they were that interesting. It's fine. Best fictional world. God of War is my best fictional world. I don't, I don't know. remember. I can't, I remember last year, did we say it was the one like you would maybe want to live in, or just in terms of the way it was? No, I don't think out? so. Yeah, okay. I would say just the most fun that was explored and romp around. Mm. 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 So I like Red Dead Redemption's world. Obviously, I was just talking about this. I feel mm. like there's a lot of weird shit going on there, but it's a, it's 
it's, it's realistic, quiet. right? There's trees. It doesn't feel fictional. It doesn't feel, yeah, right. it doesn't feel fictional. True. Whereas in God of War, you have like the world serpent just chilling out. Oh you got have, the world serpent. <laughs> yeah, making all those weird blah, 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 noises at you. You have, you know, like the dead gods <laughs> Can everywhere. Can you do another world serpent right there? <laughs> okay. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, perfect it's just it like what your turkey sounds like too <laughs> how my animals sound like that isn't, isn't the world serpent just a giant turkey <laughs> yeah I could, I could probably agree with that god of war's mm-hmm. world was beautiful it was really well done i mean the you know switch to norse mythology from from greek was a really fantastic choice i think i vividly remember when i started that game I was like, oh, I've watched the Thor movies. I kind of know some of these words. <laughs> they said Ragnarok. Um, you know, it's like, because I, I have never read or studied Norse mythology in depth. And my knowledge of it clearly is, you know, subsurface or surface level, really, if we're going there. But yeah, I, I liked it. it was, and also, like, it looked so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked uh, Nino Kuni's two. Nino Kuni twos. Wow. All right. Words, words are hard today. Words are very hard today um, for all of us. Because it is like sort of a world where you could imagine yourself just going. And granted, this again, we already said this category is not necessarily one you'd want to live in, but I think right. that it is one I would because like everyone there seems really chill. Granted, there's a lot of other weird shit happening, yeah, but sure, like yeah. if you were a surface random level, citizen, you're fine. Yeah, you'd yeah. be fine. I like there's little cat people. I would like to hang out with a cat person. Like. Speaking I of, know you would yeah, too. Yeah, that's yeah. why you got to go to Monster Hunter World, man. Oh. And hang out with all the palicos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, next one is best waifu. Best waifu, mm. Mary Jane Spider Man. Oh, she's good. That's a good pick. Mm-hmm. I, I so I have three here. I have Cassandra, Sadie Adler, and then Kara from Detroit. Mm. Mm-hmm. I feel like Sadie mm. could take care of me. From Red Dead Redemption 2. I feel like she could take care of me for reasons. Oh, 100%. I mean, she's very capable. Very yes. capable. I feel like she could do everything. Not that I need a she's woman to take care of She's got a chip on her shoulder, though. I, I don't like know if that I could, about her, though. I don't know if I could deal with that. But you're such a positive person. You want to deal with someone who's, like, nitpicking you all the time? I mean, isn't that me? I was going to say something, <laughs> but I don't want to piss anyone off. I'm like, I was going to say, why do you think I love Touché. you ladies so much? <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. I'm well, I'm well aware of my... <laughs> issues in life <laughs> i'm trying to be good um yeah for yeah. me i agree cassandra number one bay um mm. and i don't just say that because my pick was from assassin's creed last year um Bayek. Um, i remember when you tried to correct me on the pronunciation i was like no i'm making a joke oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i sort of remember that <laughs> that was a good time yeah i thought that she was just so well done and i was so excited as somebody who has loved that franchise for a long time that they actually devoted a mainstream game i know that we've had avalon in the past but they clearly didn't put as much emphasis on her as a female protagonist in the assassin's creed franchise as they did with cassandra and it really kind of started to bug me after it was obvious that everybody preferred to play as cassandra and if you are an alexios person out there please make yourself known i have yet to find one Mm -hmm. um that, I mean, she's got that badass braid. Why wouldn't she want it? I know, right? And that they kept they kept kind of like shoehorning Alexios in to mm-hmm. all of these moments. Uh, not in the game, but like in the in marketing the, Yeah, in the yeah. trailers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why, why don't you just let her have this moment? Just let her have it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be okay. We know that the dudes in Assassin's Creed aren't going anywhere. Yeah, right. Just like let her have her time in the sun. Yeah. You know? have no, time she's a definitely a strong pick because I think... Uh, I also really loved Cassandra, mm-hmm. um, but I just also Mary Jane. Mary Jane. She's classic. Classic Mary Jane. And on that note, best husbando. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, indeed. Mm. So last year we picked Creepy Alien Man from Andromeda. No, did we? Oh, did yeah. we pick Joel? Yeah. You must have overruled me on that. I never would have picked Joel. Uh, I think I we're think just, we, did. we did, yeah, yeah. I don't think we necessarily have. Oh wait, we're should not, we have been picking one. For no, school? no, okay. no, no, no. This is more of a discussion. <laughs> this is more of a discussion. <laughs> okay, I was like, <laughs> shit. No, we're not. We're not going to do that here. Um. So I have Kratos. He has, even though he's kind of crazy and he's angry all the time, he does have that soft side of him. You see you with Atreus, and I thought that was like super endearing. And you see how much he loved his his woman from the very, in the very beginning. That was a very mm. emotional scene. Arthur Morgan, because again, he has that redemption where he just 
kind of morphs as a character and he not this awful asshole i thought he was going to be depending on how I you was, play him yeah, surprise depending on how you play him i mean That's he is to say. what i'm, I'm, I'm uh, wow trying to say i was pleasantly surprised oh, by yes. how granted again i'm not finished with red I'm just a story but for cowboys I'm starting i to thought this. i was gonna hate him yeah. and then i was like oh no mm-hmm. i like him yeah um and then my last pick was roland from nino kuni too oh yeah yeah i mean you know what i mean he, he he's a very selfless man he and would be a good partner he's not cute or anything like that in fact he's, he looks like a child's cartoon character which i guess has never really they're put all, me off in the past because hello yeah, trunks, trunks. <laughs> but he's very selfless and he does some things that i thought were like that's a very good trait of you to have sir you are mm-hmm. husband material i would agree with that i would mm-hmm. agree with roland for sure mm-hmm. um i think i would pick arthur morgan though as my best husbando yeah. i mean the acts the way he talks i'm like yes yes talk arthur, to me. arthur morgan there's I, something about it where like sometimes he'll say things in the game i'm like mm. yeah i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna not pick any of those okay um arthur morgan he's just not for you he's just pretending to be a good dude he fucking murders people all the time no oh. I mean, here's the thing he's not, not that, a, not that a lot of these characters don't for the Everyone record murders of in course video games. but like <laughs> This idea that he's pretending to be good, like, and also it's like about player choice, right? And agency, like, because mm-hmm. you can play him completely you evil can, if you exactly. want to. Yeah. Um, that like, he didn't even pop into my head. Uh, that's uh, why I'm saying he it popped first, into my head when I'm thinking about my picks. My first pick was Jonah from Shadow of the Tomb Raider, because he he's like, he's badass. He's yes. always there for Laura, even when she's being a fuckboy. And like, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to keep you on track and make sure that you don't die when I can, when you'll let me help you. Mm-hmm. So I really love him as a character. I think he's awesome. But of course, I can't forget about Cade Six. Yeah. Rip. Rip in peace. Oh, yeah. Like, this was his year. He had a big moment. He's always been one of my favorite characters. And it's sad that he's gone, but. I'm still hope, holding out hope that maybe they bring him back somehow. I don't think they're going Will to. Will they bring him he's back like as like a, a chip piece? He's like a robot, man. Maybe. Like he'll just be like an a little. He'll be yeah, like an Alexa. Yeah. You know, I know just what like sitting called. on your. Just like on your counter. A robot. And you'd be like, hey, Cade. And he'd be like, hello, Andrea. And then he'd be just, no, okay. Um, next moment good. or next category. <laughs> best friendship. Best fucking friend. Best I feel like Nino Cooney too has like the one the friendships uh, yeah, in that yeah, yeah, game yeah. have they're very they're tight. so wholesome. That is such again like chicken soup for the soul. That it game really is. is. Are you really gonna tell me you're gonna shut out peaches like that? Oh, I was from right there. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was like, thinking, my brain peach? is racking through who the fuck is peaches. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I mean, yeah. As much as I love peaches, the the cougar. Uh, or mountain lion or puma <laughs> depending on where you're from uh <laughs> you know she that's sort of a one-sided friendship <laughs> really you didn't think that it, you, she wasn't there for you you can pet her she was she was great and but she, like we can't talk about the real shit she can't sometimes that's the best that's probably why you don't it. have pets because i think part i of the- grew up with a lot of pets <laughs> i'm just at a part of my life where uh i don't want my house to be destroyed I finally want to have That's nice fair. things. That's I want to have nice things. <laughs> but I do love peaches. Peaches is great. My pick is... So cheeseburger. Connor and Hank from Detroit Become Human. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. The, the fanfic about those two is wild. I didn't mean to, like, stumble into this search, but it uh-huh. turned into this, like, not safe for work fanfic <laughs> search oh, of Connor <laughs> And yeah. Hank, and it like is intense, you guys. If you want to have a very adult experience with these two characters, <laughs> you can do that. Like, the internet. I'm yeah. talking, don't do this when your kids are around. Don't do this. Maybe use an incognito window. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this oh comes down God. to, I guess, how you make the decisions in the story because yeah. they can hate each other. That's true. But yeah, if you, if you it, choose, oh my God, yeah, if you choose to make them friends or if you manage oh, to get them to be friends, like, that's a good That's pick a it. really good yeah. pick because that definitely tugged at my heartstrings oh, play that game if you haven't it's good yeah i don't i don't know who else who else i would pick i mean i i do kind of like the idea of um wait i have to you look could, up his, his character's name you could do I'm laura and jonah but yeah i don't i don't yeah. know that it's like a great no it's friendship. Like laura's a bad friend because laura yeah, exactly jonah's great jonah's great jonah's jonah did nothing wrong but uh <laughs> but laura kind of a shitty friend and i don't know if you could classify this as a friendship but i also have mamir and kratos down in atreus mamir that's mm, his name yes. that's like a, so i was thinking about that but i don't that's I don't know, not a friendship they're not really friends no but yeah it's more of a tolerance yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's like a chemistry that they have is really good 
Next category, best musical moments. Best musical <gasps> moments. This is, this is tough because like Spider-Man has some really impactful big mm -hmm. musical moments in it. Mm -hmm. um, there's that one musical moment in Red Dead that really sticks out in my mind where like that whole song plays. Unshaken? Um, That's mine. Um, that one's really epic and so rarely do you have like a single moment like that in a game there's a lot of games that have fantastic scores and composition right. soundtracks etc cetera, etc cetera, but like to have like such a pivotal moment like that but mm -hmm. um there's also the moment in celeste when you kind of reach the end of your journey there's this one thing that happens like on the top of the mountain mm. that was really impactful too Gosh, so many good soundtracks this year. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, again, it's still Unshaken by Red Dead 2. Um, obviously, I won't go into it because of spoilers, but there's, you know, some shit goes down and then you just hop on your horse and you're trotting away to somewhere and then that song just kicks in and it was actually performed live at the Game Awards and it's so emotional and so impactful, especially surrounding everything that's going on in the story at that time. And that was one of those moments where, and I've said this before, music in games doesn't really click with me. It's not something I particularly notice. But in this moment, it was just like, oh, God, the, the water works. Yeah. There's also on. that moment in Shadow of the Tomb Raider where the music gets super oh, dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she, like, the it's oil that rig? shot from the trailer where oh, she's, yeah. like, rising from the water. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's, like, something, like, something snaps, snaps in her. inside of her. And she goes on this murderous rampage and it's so intense oh. and the music in that scene just kind of amps up that feeling. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, what happened to her? I mean, a lot of She's things. She's done with yeah. her bullshit. <laughs> right? it's true. Exactly. A lot of head trauma, I think, in particular, <laughs> it may have contributed to this Yay, moment. you're not wrong. <laughs> Next category is best horsey. Best horsey for me, obviously, uh, Red Dead Redemption to the white horse you can get oh, up yeah, at the yeah. lake. The Arabian? Yes, the white Arabian horse. Lake she was Isabella, a bitch I think. to get, but mm -hmm. once I got her, I was like, you are beautiful. I love watching your butt. <laughs> it does. The butt physics in that butt game are so good. so good. Oh, God. I wanted to try to get that horse, but it was just, I didn't have the patience. I tried to get one horse, one wild horse, and then I was like, I'm done. I don't have the patience for this. I mean, there's no contest to unicorn Phobos in my mind. Like Phobos is is your main squeeze throughout all of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's none of this. Oh, this pretty horse, that pretty horse. <laughs> now that horse that you have in Red Dead. Like no, Phobos is always there Artemis for you. Artemis is the best horse. Artemis. Legitimately. Th I'm sorry, I named her Artemis. So like that's what the white horse is You don't have to be sorry. I'm just saying like, and the fact that the unicorn skin made little rainbow trails come out of your feet as you ran. Oh my like God. it was chef's kiss i think mine was the pegasus from from o odyssey. odyssey yeah i bought that and then i played that game for maybe like 10 hours but in that time that was the best horse so I, would, I mean i do love those cosmetic items i'm only picking red dead horses because again i keep talking about how amazing their the butts butt are or the, butt the, animation. the graphics, like the graphics on, the on the horses oh, are real coats after you brush if them you had, oh. if that horse left little rainbow trails that'd be fucking great <laughs> that'd be the end of all <laughs> next category is best costume Best costume. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what we picked. What we picked last year. Oh, oh it was the um, wasn't it the Horizon, the Shield Maybe. Weaver armor. Oh, Shield Weaver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know best costume. Some of the stuff Kratos gets is pretty. Yeah, badass. the the armor set that you get in Niflheim is mm -hmm. really yeah. really cool. But there's some amazing costumes in Monster Hunter World. Some of the mm -hmm. gear sets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can get are really good. I mean, my personal favorite would probably have to be my Solstice armor gear from Destiny right before Forsaken launched uh, because I had to grind so hard to get that mm -hmm. gear set and it's still my favorite set to use despite the fact that I have to keep infusing it and spending all these resources, but I'm like, but it's so pretty. <laughs> I just want Transmorg and everything. Mm -hmm. I really liked... Um, Spider-Man, the oh, costume yeah, yeah, yeah. you get basically at oh, the yeah, very the end of the suits? game. Yeah. Oh, there's so, so many good suits. Yeah, it'd be hard to pick or which like one the, is my actually fave. the the one that basically makes you look like comic Spider-Man. Because the way that they had to light that in order to make it look not shitty in that game, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive to me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, they managed to pull that off. Yeah, I mean, all the clothing in Red Dead is really well designed and animated, but yeah, 
It's, it's still stands. just it's Western just, clothes. It's period clothing. That's just it, yeah. It's not put on the top hat. <laughs> total costume. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next time. Ta- next time. Next category. Funniest moments. <gasps> so for me, this is this is okay. God of War. Light spoilers here. Uh, God, Kratos is a god. Atreus is part god. Whoa. Um, there's a point in the that's, story. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a spoiler. <laughs> no, I know. So there's a point in the story where Kratos is. Okay, this is where it's going to get a little bit spoilery. Uh, Kratos is talking to Atreus about him being a god, and he's having this big unveil because this whole time Kratos has been holding in all this anger about, you know, he's an angry guy. He has a lot of frustrations with life, and he has this child who he does not understand, and this child who does not understand himself. And it's just a bad situation. So, so Kratos finally is like, listen, child, boy, 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 I'm a god, and you're a god. And it's this dramatic shot of just like you see Kratos facing away from Atreus and Atreus in the background facing the back of Kratos. And there's like this silence. And Kratos is like, boy, have you nothing to say? And Atreus is like, can I turn into an animal? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh my God. Like it's such a kid thing yeah. to be like, instead of having like a really, yeah, no, I yeah. fucking love that you yeah. picked this moment because it's so, it is really good when he's just like, can I fly? Can I do these yeah, things? Yeah. Like, he's like, of course, that's going to be the first thing a kid would ask. Like, <laughs> what cool shit can I do, man? Yeah. Uh, instead of like really having it sink in of what this means and like the impact of it. It's just more of like, but what cool shit? Yeah, no, that was really good. I like that. That is really funny. Because obviously there's a lot of funny moments just in general in games, but that's... Because I keep thinking, I'm like, I know that I've laughed out loud Mm -hmm. at several moments in different various things. Right. But I'm also having trouble remembering what they are. Uh, I know I've laughed out... I laughed out loud a few times at the very beginning of Red Dead Redemption. Just a few of the one-liners Arthur Morgan does Mm -hmm. at people. And I was just like, ha! (laughs) Oh, yeah, there's a lot of good one-liners from Cassandra in Assassin's Creed, too. Mm -hmm. She's surprisingly funny as a character. Um, One of my funniest moments wasn't actually, like, a scripted moment, but just something that happened to me in Red Dead, this, like, crazy horse glitch that I got. (laughs) That I posted online um, of my horse, like... uh, walking sideways in town and then got stuck like on a piece of stairs and then i tried to like sprint it out of the city and then of course i like stampeded over someone and then i was wanted and i just like i i couldn't i couldn't hold it in i can't do it anymore it was funny there's also a mission in red dead with arthur morgan and lenny that's sort of early Mm -hmm. on that's really funny too but also this is not this now that you're talking about non-scripted things one of the funniest moments andrea and i had was most recently in red dead redemption online (laughs) where we murdered each other (laughs) we murdered each other but had a good time and it was all stemming from the fact that i thought i was being cute and i was gonna ride on the back of your horse yeah but but instead i knocked her off of her horse and stole her horse which is not what i was intending to do but and i had to take revenge of and course she of shot course me in the head, and then i shot her in the back of the head <laughs> and i'm thinking of that one side quest in assassin's creed where you come across a kid like a kid like a teenager like in a cage who's like protesting mm-hmm. um and you have to like go do this quest for his dad who's a blacksmith and then like at the end of it um you can choose to romance the blacksmith or not and of course i romance oh. everybody i could in that game because oh like, yeah <laughs> i'm also like sleeping with literally anybody everybody anybody and everybody oh what about in assassin's creed i saw jason do this you bang an old lady right i did yeah yeah that was a funny yeah. banging scene right and then because you're doing it because the husband wants you to or something yeah it's because she has an insatiable appetite <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yes. he needs a and break he's exhausted he's like listen i just can't and she because she sends you on a fetch quest to get a potion to keep him going like <laughs> modern Dave Viagra yeah, or whatever yeah. and he's just like please stop she I just amazing. need a break and she's like no I need more but she's like 80 I love yeah, it yeah it's so good <laughs> so good that was a great quest um I also just in general gotta give a shout out to Spider-Man because mm-hmm. Peter Parker is hilarious yeah. yeah he's great um best category best romance for me it's Peter Parker and Mary Jane mm-hmm. that's a complicated one I have Florence written down Oh, oh so sad. I know. Oh, I know. Well, because God. I know, and I struggle. Too I was real, like, <laughs> too real. I need the fantasy of Peter Parker and Mary Jane. I know, but that's if you haven't played Florence yet. I know we talk about it a lot. It takes like what half an hour of your time, forty-five minutes maybe. Yeah. It's a buck yeah. or two. It's, Just, that's a trip, though. Yeah, that was a uh, very real. But I thought that's why it's best romance. It's like, I mean, I guess that's true. Yeah. Want, want. My God, now I'm like depressed. This is, yeah, this is a tough. This is a tough one. Yeah, I, was... I immediately thought of Hank and Connor, of course. Um, but, uh, just, Jk, Jk. Um, so good. 
I mean, Mary Jane and Peter Parker are probably the winner for me as mm -hmm. well because it's just like so classic. And the way that they developed it throughout the game was really, really good to me. Like, it felt good. And I'm like, going yeah. through all my, li my list of all the games I played this year, and there weren't a lot of romance. No. Ra romance I, things yeah. going on. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, I mean, you could like maybe angle Marston and Abigail, but not really because no. they kind of hate each other. <laughs> and up. then there's like that yeah. one girl. You, oh my God, I hate her. The girl that keeps coming for Arthur, but I keep doing requests. But I'm oh, like, I hate Mary, you. Mary Beth. <laughs> yeah. I hate you. You're needy. You're just like, oh, who else could I possibly call? I'm like, I don't know. Literally anyone. This literally is... anyone else except your ex boyfriend. <laughs> maybe. I am so excited to do a but spoiler think cast. Of how down on her luck she must be if she's calling her ex boyfriend to help her out. No. I mean, Maybe she's Think stop capable. Lengths, Girl, go. stop it. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Damn it. Yeah. Next category, best DLC. I actually haven't played almost any I don't DLC know if I've, this year. I know you've done DLC. Yeah, I've done a bunch this yeah. year. I mean, does Forsaken count as DLC? It's an expansion, sure. technically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, for me, I think that would be the winner, mm -hmm. like hands down, without without contest. But there's been some, I mean, the Spider-Man story DLC was cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, from what I've played of it. Um, I haven't gotten to spend time with the Assassin's Creed DLC like I really wanted to. I'm trying to think of what the only other deal. Say Joker and Smash. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's not out yet. I know, but I'm just. Cheating. I think the only DLC I've played was the uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the Challenge Tomb, the mm. co-op. I wouldn't say that's the best DLC, but it's the DLC I played, and it was fun. It was fine. That okay, you're like it was fun. It was fun. It was kind of downgrading it, a little. It, bit. it was fine, fun. It was fine. It was it was, it was just fine. It was fine. It was fine, fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've played almost. I have some of the Spider-Man DLC. I haven't gotten to it yet, um, so I just haven't honestly engaged in much DLC this year. Yeah, I have. I have nothing. All right, next category: best photo mode screenshot. This one's tough. Because uh, the first thing, of course, I think that came to a lot of people's minds when you think best photo mode, you think Spider-Man, right? Because it's just so wild what you can do with it. But then, Stimer, were you talking about yeah. God of War? I was like, like yeah. God of War, you can make Kratos smile. You can. Yeah, you really can. I I think when I was playing God of War, I every time I tried to capture a shot, I just stopped because... I could never quite get the photo to look as good as it looked mm. while I was playing. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so I just wasn't conveying what I wanted to to snapshot. I think the one that I used the most was the one in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I think also a lot of this, the um, in-game screenshot, whatever snapshot stuff, wasn't implemented until after God of War released. And so we were playing it pre-release, so we didn't have all of those fancy pants mechanics is i didn't play it after the game released i didn't, so I didn't get I, to use granted, it i don't really engage with i don't either and i wish i did i just don't i just yeah yeah i also don't, I don't. but i liked that you could i liked the posing that they put in for god of war because it just cracked me up so funny kratos isn't kratos meant kratos to do is, that meant to kratos, smile. Yeah. Even, if, even some of the atreus faces were pretty funny oh my God, yeah so good. i do also want to give a shout out to the player cards and the way you can customize them with the photos in monster hunter world mm. and with your like little palico pet and, and things like that the card that you see when you look at other people's squads so that was really fun too best npc hmm. i mean to me the first person i thought of was mimir because oh, he's yeah, yeah. just always there he's always got a story or something quippy to say yeah, yeah, yeah. but the the two dwarven brothers also are fantastic characters mm -hmm. i were still remember being so confused about mimir because so i would just gotten him and i mean i guess spoilers but like you've seen it like he's a he attaches to your hip mm -hmm. like um, and I wouldn't say that's a spoiler. It's not yeah. really a spoiler, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, um, but for a, for a little while, I was so confused as to who was talking. <laughs> like, so I was I was in oh, I no. was in a, like a like a cave or something, trying to find a missing person, and I kept hearing this voice, and I'm like, how am I? That must be the person I'm looking for. I should follow the voice. But since it's on your hip, I was like, I don't know which direction this is coming from because it's you. It's on you. And so like, I was just like super confused That's so for funny. a bit. And then eventually I saw, I noticed the mouth moving. Mm -hmm. All right. And I was like, oh. it's fucking him. Jesus Christ. I was like, I'm so stupid. That's so funny. <laughs> Mamir, why you got to do me dirty like why that? Why you got to do me dirty? But uh, yeah, he was incredibly entertaining and the best NPC companion you could probably ask for. 
Yeah. I would say Mimir for sure. There's also that silly dude in Red Dead who's always like looking for his pal Gavin. Have you come across this? Oh, yes. oh my God, he's the worst. He's oh, like you the you... best NPC. I no, not him. the best, but he's like one that comes to mind. I think he's funny. I like the funny? guy who was crying in Red Dead. The dude who's like Jessica, whatever her name was. I forget her oh, name. Oh, by the creek. By the creek. Yeah. He's just crying oh. by the river. There's You're so just like, silly oh, people. you poor kid. So oh, I know how that goes. Um, next category: best LFG game spoiler warning best looking for group game. oh I, I didn't put a space here <laughs> so like, best I lfg game else. and then we start going into the spoiler wordings yes mm. so basically this is like the game you want to play with friends yeah um for me the game this year that is different because i i can't just go back to destiny like the game that really made me seek out people to play was monster hunter world mm -hmm. and that's a new experience for me because i've never gotten into monster hunter before and Something about the formula and the way that Capcom changed it up and added it and made it more approachable for people like me who were mm -hmm. always interested in the genre but was like, this is way too hard and complicated for me. That game and playing that game with people both from the What's Good squad and the Kind of Funny squad was so much fun to just run around and slay monsters together, get together and go hunting for specific items to make specific armor sets and... I haven't gotten into an RPG combat experience like that before. I've really never played an online game quite like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely mine for the, for 2018. Yeah. I did. Just, I have not played a lot of online multiplayer games. I haven't either. I think. No, you have. You just refuse to invite us to ever. Oh, play no. That is no. also true. <laughs> no. Nay. Wait, what is it? We, we played something. You played Red Dead. You no, guys did play Sea Red of Dead, Thieves without me. Something else, but I don't we, well, we attempted to play Sea of Thieves. We did attempt to play Sea of Thieves. I know. Thieves. Like, yeah. that had the potential to be the LFG for us. Yeah. And then it just kind of okay. fell flat because we wanted a PVE component and there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wasn't and isn't one. Yeah. And like. I'm over that now. I'm over the fact that, that they've just decided that this is the way the game is. And I'm that, I'm like, fine. that's cool. That's yeah. just not the kind of game that I want to play. Yep, that's fair. So mm -hmm. I don't need to spend any more time berating <laughs> Rare's choice. I just, it's not so for me. So for next year, can we include Fallout 76 and Red Dead Online? Because yeah, like right now we can. Too, yeah, because yeah. right now it's too early for them. Those but are the I games that popped into my mind. Their online experience, both of them are broken. Obviously, Fallout is more broken. Yeah. In a lot of ways, but like Red Dead, it's not great. Oh, did you ladies hear that you can redeem free money from Red Dead Online right now? Because you signed I in. Heard. Yeah, fifteen gold bars and like two hundred fifty bucks or something like Wait, that. What? Yeah, because you played before last, like some time late last week. If you sign in, you'll get some free money. Ooh. Ooh, so like there you go. Monies. Nice. I didn't sign in, so I won't get any money. This is my old Aww. Haggard character. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right, now yeah, we're getting. I just want to make our characters pretty. Everybody. I know. How do I be prettier? All... Spoiler territory. And now the thing about this is also I'm going to be yelling at either of you if you. Spoil well, and, and I don't even know if I we want. can. Yeah. So it's like it's going to be light spoilers. Because I haven't finished Red Dead, and if I yeah, so we right haven't all finished all. No, we're the same definitely games. The, this is not spoiler cast territory. Like we're yeah. not going to be talking about the ends of key games like Spider Man, like God of War, like Assassin's Creed, like Red Dead, because this isn't the place for that. Because yep. we can do that and have those spoiler casts in the beginning part of 2019, because we know that a lot of you out there maybe got gifted that game recently. Maybe you picked it up on Black Friday sales and you haven't gotten to the ends yet. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't want to spoil it for you either. So yeah. And this one, I'm, and if you're itching to talk to somebody, put a post out on the discord and you can like go ham with somebody about go it. Ham. Yes. All right. So most emotionally devastating moment. I can't talk about that. I can't talk about it. Mm, oh yeah well i mean not that i think yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know anyway. which game i mean you just say the game no okay why not just uh, now i definitely can't say it so it's fine let's just i don't want to say anything all right now you're being weird no 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 i feel like okay here's the thing because I, I know that there's several emotional moments in red dead redemption 2 okay red dead redemption 2 yeah i mean you're I not like, spoiling yeah, not anything like, for anybody people yeah. know that shit goes down so in red people, dead yeah so yeah <laughs> like, no not everybody's gonna come out of that alive you know but i know but i know there are some people because if i just oh never mind just yeah <laughs> you can just say the game name and then be like you'll find out no it's not me being weird it's just me knowing that there are some people forget it so without talking about character names like why was the emo why was the moment emotional for you like what <laughs> led to it being so devastating well no because that because then she'd be talking i about can't I, that's what i'm saying it's like i can't i you don't know how to express those feelings without i can't specifics. without it'll give it away immediately so i can't even i can't even i can't even. i can't even right now um 
there was definitely I'm, I'm also not going to say what it is because uh it would be major spoilers but i will say spider-man oh yeah for sure oh yeah, exactly yeah. What you're talking about yeah, yeah. definitely this is so this is a weird discussion because like this, but I'm not saying what it is because I'm yeah. what did we pick yeah. last year that we talked about. Last year it was a game I don't remember, but we'd all finished it, and so we were able to deep dive into it. And I don't know what that was. I'll see if I can find. I also it. don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember what we talked about last year. Yeah. Anyway, um, next one is. Wait, I don't get one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what's yes, you yours? Do. What's yours? I mean. It... Well, I mean, I want to talk about, like, the death of Cade Six. But, like, uh-huh. in the moment, it wasn't as devastating. I'm, like, talking myself out like, of this pick already. It's just because, a general like, Well, and because you can go back and replay missions where he's still alive, uh. which kind of takes the wind out of the sails just mm-hmm. a yeah. little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember when they came forward and when Bungie did, like, a, li- a live stream or something, and they're like, no, like, he's gone. Like, he's... He did. He's really, like, he's really, really dead. He's and I was really like, gone. But, do this. but, but... But and they're like, nah, yeah, he's uh, he's dead. Then you just get over it. Um, there's a couple. So there was one moment in God of War, um, and this could be considered light spoilers, where um, something is going on with Atreus, and it's clear to the player that like something's up, mm-hmm. and it's clear to Kratos that like something's going on, and we, we can't quite put your finger on what's causing it, and you find out obviously later on in the game right. like what happens, but. When the game starts out, it's clear that there is a power dynamic between them, but that he's respectful, but still loves his father, but still is like has some angst as he kids are all want to do. Want to do. <laughs> but like they have a, a a core good relationship at the bottom of it, but then it turns really nasty in this one part of the game, and oh, it yeah. and it really hit me emotionally oh, in a I way that really I wasn't angry. expecting mm-hmm. because I was like I got yeah I got really mad yeah I got really mad about it and I was just like I don't like this I don't like what's happening mm-hmm. I don't like how they're talking to each other mm-hmm. I want this to be over with it was uncomfortable it was yeah. yeah and like it's rare that a game can make you feel that uncomfortable yeah because I think it's easy to get mad in a game for a variety of reasons but I was ang- that this type of anger was something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was very intimate, and you felt like you were involved, right? I, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. You're like, I, I need to mediate this shit. What's yeah. going on? In life? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sit you both down and st- you straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely I agree with that. That was a. It, I, I don't know if devastating is the word, but yeah, that, that's definitely a moment that that triggered an emotional mm-hmm. reaction for. Yeah, for that's me a good as one. Well. Uh, most agonizing choice. Probably stuff in Detroit. Detroit. Oh, that's like, oh, so rough that game with the choices. I know, especially because like a lot of them you have to make quickly, and it's just like uh, there's a moment where it's basically like you're you're infiltrating a thing, and some dude is running away, and I was like, I'm just gonna kill him, like, like, like yeah. just fucking kill him, like that's the best you can mm-hmm. do. And then there was another moment. Oh god, um, I don't know if I can. Well, well, we're in spoiler territory. We're in spoiler now. territory. So there's a part as long with- as it's not like something really crazy for a game that came out in fall. Yeah, because that game came out in May, so the people have had May. a lot more time to play. Um, it's with the Tracys. So yeah, like, yeah. the oh yeah. So mm-hmm. for me, um, I I shot because someone's coming at me and I have a gun, so I shoot you. But like then like dealing with the aftermath of that, I was like, oh fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, maybe I shouldn't have, but like, um, so to me, that was probably the, the hardest choice that I had to like live with. Cause I decided to not go back through and like change any of the choices that I'd made in that game. I was like, the way I play mm-hmm. this game is just, I'm playing one, one and through. It, it's so painful to play it that way too, because mm-hmm. you're like, but I would probably do it different. And that's not something I think that game did really well is that there were some conversation choices that I didn't like or after I picked it I was like oh I wouldn't have said that and then I had this profound moment where I'm like it's like real life <laughs> where you say something and you instantly regret it and you're like but that's not what I meant to say I meant yeah, to say okay. something else but then it's too late and you can't go back and change it or yep. take it back yeah and and I think that game really nailed that part of the dialogue options the scene at the very end of the game where you're in like the you know the robot concentration camp mm-hmm. so to speak and Actually, you're like I wasn't in that and you're like trying to oh you didn't get to that no yeah like, yeah so that's the, the other thing about this game is like there's sections you cannot if you kill really. people <laughs> yeah it's just like there was some decisions in that section right that were really hard and that that scene in general 
was just really hard to play through because of what it evoked from what different groups of humans have gone through in real life yeah. mm -hmm. over, you know, our history as a species. It's just like, wow, we've done some fucked up things to each other over the course of time. And I Very think there's a part where you're playing as Marcus in Detroit and you're rallying and you have to essentially sacrifice like one of your bros to remain peaceful. You have to say, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard. That game was very tense. Yeah. Yes. So good, though. So maybe we can add in this on the fly category. What was the most tense moment that you can think of from a game? Obviously, like the God of War Atreus, the Kratos, I'm going to Atreus one. And I say this because I'm thinking about it. I think mine would be the very end against spoilers when you're with Kara and you're trying to get through immigration. Mm -hmm. and you and you know that you don't have what you need to get through and they're going to scan you they're going to find out you're an android but if you played it right the dude who's letting people in the officer he looks up and he sees the peaceful demonstration of the androids and he's like just get in here but it's just that you're in line and you're slowly entering forward and you know that you're going to get busted and you don't know how that's going to play out and see, then I what's going to happen that scene oh yeah, see, man yeah because yeah. i didn't I have did, a peaceful but... demonstration yeah <laughs> mm, yeah i know that was a really good that was a very tense moment. Good, tense moment. I was clenching very hard. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think. I'm going to go back through my list. of Because we're out of categories, babies. Well, that's fine because we need, we need to talk about our personal game of the year. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, also, there was some categories that we kind of, like, rushed through a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say when it comes to tense moments, there were some good ones in shadow of the tomb raider between laura and jonah mm. where oh, yeah. like where, he, where it felt like he was gonna be like i'm done with you yeah right? yeah and it, and it was so. like no please you're the only one keeping this on the rails <laughs> <laughs> um, you're the only likable character in this video game <laughs> shit um and like what would we do without you from a story perspective but from a gameplay perspective mm -hmm. there were some of the tombs with the um what's the name of the mythological creature the the dudes the cave dudes with all the spikes coming i don't out of their remember face. what they're called um Shit. i'll have to look it up what they're mm. called but i know what you're talking every about. tomb raider game dudes. in the reboot of the trilogy has had like a weird crazy kind of supernatural enemy yeah and the ones in shadow of the tomb raider were so scary to fight dude and, they were fucking creepy and then so you could see them like scurrying across in the background. There's also like a moment where Lara is kind of like with them and you're not sure if they're just about to straight murder you. Right. And, yeah. So that not, weird queen person. Weird, yeah, oh. exactly. It was just like, Scary. oh, shit. Yax? No, it's not Yaxel. I don't know what it is. Yaxel is the name of the Yeah, this isn't working. Girl, I think. Or maybe that is the name of that. Cult of know. Cuckoo Cuckoo. But there's also one game we haven't really talked a lot about because there was only one episode and that is Life is Strange. Yeah, um, and I do think that there were definitely a lot of tense moments in that game as mm -hmm. well. Oh, dude! When like the very even there's not the very beginning, but like sort of the beginning of the mm -hmm. episode and the way it starts out is oh. just like woof. Oh, that's all I gotta say. I'm really I'm ready <laughs> for the rest. I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get episode two mm -hmm. um, before the end of the year, but hopefully it's coming soon. We haven't gotten an announcement or maybe by the time this episode airs, something has happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to imagine it's coming in January, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fingers, fingers crossed. And like, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Life is Strange 2 is going to play out next year. And I have no doubt that we're going to see it nominated um, at oh, the Game yeah, Awards definitely. 2019 for probably the same categories that it was nominated for this year. Probably has a better shot at winning. Even during our discussions and Game Awards predictions, I was like, we don't know where great this is episode, going. Yeah. kind of tough to judge the single episode against the full titles of 2018 because there was just so many good ones. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Were there any games this year that surprised you that you liked more than you thought you would? God of War. <laughs> Yeah, really? You didn't think you were gonna like it? I thought I was going. We to were on the fence. Like I remember. it fine, but again, like the things that we've, we've talked about ad nauseum. I didn't like Kratos as a character. Mm, I've yep. never liked a God of War game. Like, so basically, the odds were against me actually liking it. I wanted to like it. I enjoyed the concept of what they were doing, but I wasn't sure if it was gonna actually like be satisfying for me as a player. Um, and it was so. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it would be Spider-Man. I wasn't sure if I would, because, you know, again, city yeah, settings and like trees. That kind of yeah, stuff. I don't like it too. When it's too realistic, I don't like it. But I think Peter Parker is such a so charming. charming character. And 
I found myself actually fascinated with the fascinated with the story and the lore of the villains and whatnot in Spider Man. Mm-hmm. It actually, when I was playing, it made me want to start reading the comics, which obviously never came to fruition. But I was so interested in learning about more about these characters, and yeah, I really liked it. And I'm really sad I haven't finished it, but. There's so much shit came up last minute, but I really, really like that game. Definitely in my top 10 of the year, which is really surprising. Did not think that would be the case. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Steimer, in that I came in trepidatious to God of War, but once I went to that first preview event, I was like, this is definitely going to be game of the year. So I think that that one telegraphed a little bit more. A game, like I said earlier in this episode, that I never expected to like was Monster Hunter World. Oh, yeah, never anticipated putting as many hours into that game as I did and really getting into the deep RPG mechanics of that game and really enjoying it and loving it. Um, another game that I didn't expect to love as much as I did was Tetris effect oh. because I'm like, it's Tetris. Everyone's played Tetris. It's classic. Yeah. I love it. It's but great. But Mizuguchi's addition to that classic puzzle formula made it so mind blowingly amazing that it just like, I actually want to play that while I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, girl, we'll set the PSVR up and I you don't can have try it. Out of my house. And it's it's just one of those games that is um, a must play for this year and something that I knew was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be that good. good. I have another one for you. Yeah. By you. <laughs> Celeste. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. That I didn't want to play that game. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't play that game for the first nine months of the year. But yeah. I made the I made the promise mm-hmm. after it came out and I got all of those ten out of ten scores that I was like, clearly I have to play this game for Game of the Awards or Game of the Game of the Year considerations and yeah. awards. And so I did and like Wow. It's been a year of gaming growth for you, Andrea. You I'm so has. proud of you. Thank you. I even played Pokemon this year. See, yeah, you Next did. year, Final Fantasy. <laughs> it's going to happen. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> I'd to keep waiting for Final Fantasy. Uh, you will probably get me to play Resident Evil next year. <gasps> but Final Fantasy, oh you might god. have to hold your breath a little bit longer on. Oh my god, oh my god. Um, next year, holy shit. But there was just so many games next year's gonna be insane. that, that oh. I've still missed that I want to go back to. Some games that mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to to catching up on. Um, I really want to check out Luminous Remastered. Mm. Heard nothing but excellent things. I want to spend some more time going back to No Man's Sky next because I heard fantastic things about all the work that Hello Games did to really kind of bring that game back to life and reinvigorate it. Talk about like best DLC. If I had Mm. played it, maybe I would have picked that instead but didn't get nearly enough time with it. I would like to spend more time with that too because I hopped in right when all that hubbub was coming up about it and uh it just didn't do anything for me mm-hmm. i it just it's i think i'm learning games where you have like minecraft style games i'm just like yeah i don't sure. if like it's a creative sandbox, sandbox creative it's like, sandbox yeah, yeah if you don't have a pers- like a point of view it's like something you're going in for i guess a directive of some kind like it's mm-hmm. kind of like whatever yeah, but yeah another yeah. one for me of the like things i wasn't necessarily expecting but i was glad that it, it uh stuck with me i don't know words are hard today yeah but uh it was assassin's creed odyssey and that's because like Aww. i keep trying assassin's creeds and i'm like one day one of these will stick and this was kind of the Dang. year where it finally i'm so happy did. for you because that's always been my problem too. yeah it, like they're they're just i don't know like i know that last year everybody loved origins mm-hmm. i liked it okay i didn't get anywhere near to finishing it um i kind of just enjoyed fucking around for a while and then quit out um but I really, really, really do want to go back and finish Odyssey because just the way that they made the changes that they made to it and the fact that I have Cassandra Mm -hmm. as a character like, yeah, like this is this is what I would want from a game. Yeah. Oh, man. For some reason, it just didn't stick with me. I wonder if someone gave me a game, uh, an Assassin's Creed game. and didn't have the Assassin's Creed title on it. If maybe I if would, it would like be it. Better. I think I'm too in my head now. Yeah. Like, honestly, that could be what it is, is I'm just too in my head. Something about it just doesn't click, and I don't know why. Oh, and they don't police you with your fucking horse this time? So good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Just, like, run to the area. Unlike Red I Dead Redemption someone 2. On the way, that's fine. Yeah. I wish that, that's something about Red Dead that's really annoying. Is that it you? is, I yeah. I think that you should give Assassin's Creed another shot. I think so, too. I do, because I know I do need to. I love the characters, and I like the story and where it's going. And I've seen Jason play it, and he's almost done with it. And I'm like, this is really interesting. I'm fascinated. Like, I'll pause my game to watch the cutscenes. I'm like, wow. But once I have control, I just, it just does nothing for me. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, no, I really, really was into it. And then obviously other things came out, and it kind of like yeah. got put on the back burner. But, I yeah, know it's a good game. Yeah. We're kind of going off the rails here, but I'm sad that I never finished Dragon Quest Eleven. 
Mm. I'm really, really sad about that. But there's, again, that's like a game I put 80 hours into. And then it's just like that wasn't enough to finish it. Because they said up front that it's an over 100 hour game Mm -hmm. because the way that they designed that game was that there's not going to be any DLC. There's no expansions. Everything they wanted to make for that game is in the game. Yeah. And it's a great game. It was my pick for uh, RPG of the year. But just can I finish it? Didn't finish Spider-Man. Haven't finished Tomb Raider yet. (laughs) Both of those are short. I know, but it's there's other things I'm playing right now, like cattails. Like horse prints? And, no, my I haven't picked that up prince. in a while. <laughs> he's fighting people for me right now. It's really romantic. Oh, my God. That's adorable. Is it? He's really a horse. He's, he's a horse straight with a up face. A, no, but he is legitimately. But is he? I don't know. I don't know how it ends. And I want to know. Maybe she's like under some weird acid trip. And maybe this whole time he's been like Brad Pitt of anime characters. No, but the, you said that they say in the game that he's a horse. Me, like I said, maybe she's tripping balls. <laughs> Maybe this bitch. But I thought it was a third party who's saying, no, he's it a is, horse. It is, but it but could be part of her dream. Sometimes year of the horse, people can see a human Again, face. she could be, she could, this is what happens. See, she's on a first date and she's with she a super with duper hot guy. I know they're on a ranch. A oh, real horse. And she I mean, trips over a solidified piece of horse shit and she hits her head on the fence. And then she's having this terrible trip right now. And then she's going to wake up and then she's going to see hot anime guy. It was guy, all a dream. And it was all a dream. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't even know what to Can do Can my this. horse prince win weirdest shit of the year even though it didn't come out this year? <laughs> yeah, how come horse prince didn't win horsey of the year, right? Oh, oh shit! You fucked up. I did fuck that up. <laughs> Dude, I fucked that up royally. <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry. Do you over. You know, whatever your name is. I know. Terrible. Okay. So, Steimer. Yeah. What was your personal game of the year? Not the game that you would vote as the best game, but like for you, is your favorite game of 2018? Um, for right for right now, for where I am at completion wise of all of the games of the year, because I have not finished Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, it would be God of War. I don't know if that will change to, once I finish the story of Red Dead Redemption 2. It's possible that it could. Um, but just where I'm at right now, I think God of War was sort of the perfect culmination of like, is that the, how you say that word? Culmination. Culmination. Yeah. Brain. You were very close. Brain. <laughs> Get it together. Uh, <laughs> um and yes, like again, I had a struggle. I had a struggle intro with that game. <laughs> you had a very bad ear being infection. Being very, being very ill. There are butt berries involved. Being tr- trying to figure it out, also just because again, I never played a God of War. But once I really got into it, it had great pacing. It had great art, great scale, great sound. Like everything was just beautiful about it and like Mm -hmm. some of the twists and turns that it takes along those journeys i remember legitimately putting my controller down being like yes like or like you're doing something like fuck yeah like we're doing the thing let's do the thing (laughs) um that's i'm being vague on purpose and uh so yeah i just like i got so much joy out of that game and it and it really managed to make me emotionally invested in two characters i didn't give a fuck about ever Mm -hmm. right obviously atreus never existed before but kratos i never cared about um was very much a one note type character he's just shouting at everything uh and atreus in general i don't like kids in video games i think that they are emotional manipulation tools that usually do not work on me and but the way that they build up your relationship with atreus and the natural ebbs and flows of it Mm -hmm. made it feel much more impactful um than than i think most children and video games have before i think there's a few other exceptions i think clementine from walking dead season one was one uh but in general i do think that people just kind of throw them in there to be like yeah oh feel bad manipulate. for this little human manipulate yes. you yes manipulate manipulate yeah, manipulate hmm. we need that weird word it is right it's like one of those things that you say over and over again and you're like, like spoon 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 oh, I, I got into a loop with that word i was like why is that word so weird? <laughs> all words know. are weird, aren't they? They're yeah. all made up. It's just best not to think about them. That's true. <laughs> Brittany, what was your personal favorite game personal. of the year? Definitely Echo Chamber here. Red Dead Redemption 2, that's all I feel like I'm talking about. But that game, I agree with Steimer, God of War, Masterpiece. Like, And I did not finish Red Dead Redemption 2 and think it's a masterpiece on the same level as God of War. I think God of War sure. did well, they're just a so, lot of things. so different. And I think yeah. also the fact that... Sorry, I'm cutting you off. No, no, please do. Um... I just wanted to acknowledge that I well, I'm well aware I'm being a dick right now. You're uh, not being a dick. This is, <laughs> this is an open air discussion. Well, that makes sense. God of War is a perfectly edited game. Yes. It has what it needs and it doesn't have a lot of extra fluff. I personally didn't do the shit. I forgot the name of the realm that's optional that is mostly just combat. Niflheim. I did not do Niflheim. 
I just noped out of it. I think I didn't really do much of the, anything that was kind of optional. I touched for like a second and then bounced out. Mm-hmm. But and the main was the, the red one. There's a, yeah. Muspelheim, I think. Musel, Mus- I think Mucinex. it's Muspelheim. <laughs> Mucinex. <laughs> <laughs> but um, otherwise, the game was exactly what it needed to be. And yes. for the most part, nothing more. Uh, there's no fat. There's not a lot of fat in yeah. there. Like I said before, it does do the video game thing of like, you think you're going in the very predictable kind of, yeah, predictable right. kind of a, a twist in that right, right. At that one particular point that's not obviously a, an important twist mm-hmm. in my opinion for the game but um whereas red dead is a massive sort of slow kind of like walk in the park kind of a thing yeah, yeah. until i assume it's going to hit a certain turn and then it'll ramp but that that intro length is going to be a lot longer than say something that is edited like god of war yeah no 100 percent. and I, that's part of the reason why i voted for god of war for a critical game of the year but from personal perspective yeah like red dead uh, i enjoy the pacing i'm starting to learn in my old age that i like games that allow you to experience your story at the pace you want to and that's mm-hmm. something that red dead does and obviously you can do that in god of war too but it's not like there's this huge world all these little side things going on like the fat is trimmed as you would say right yeah and all of the characters in that game um, were very different and they all brought something unique and there were just a lot of emotional moments in tune with even if it's just like the weather timed with the music timed with what's going on in that story and so many of the incredible things I saw in that game were just purely optional like I would just go to camp and just to see what's going on and there would be conversations happening all around and every conversation is just purely chore- what's the word I'm looking for? choreographed choreographed thank you and so it was just amazing that all that effort went into something that you may or may not ever see. And that really stuck with me and it really, you know, brought me into the immersion of it all. And yeah, just the way that story unfolds and the characters develop and the settings. And I like all the, I like the hunting, the fishing, the, the towns, the setting. I have a thing for Western games and I didn't really know that obviously with Red Dead I did, but then with this one, it just completely solidified it. Everything going on in that world is interesting to me. I'm like, what's, what are you doing? What's the saloon? Like the sound is the boards make when you walk. It's all just mm, so, bleh. that was that good. Oh, wood Brittany. Yeah. I'm gonna let you have this on one condition. Yo, I never again want to hear some bullshit about how you don't like to play games with fucking trees. There are a lot literally of never fucking again. Are you allowed to bring that shit up? Cause Red Dead is one giant fucking forest. Except okay. Not, not uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me, let me chat. So it, it is. It, there are a lot of trees. Now the thing with Horizon is that it's very green, and I feel like Red Dead isn't all just like green trees. How dare you? Yes, it is. No, it's all green trees. It's, it's not all green trees. There's Except for the parts on the mountain green. where there's snow. <laughs> there's like the snowy trees. There's the swampy trees. Then there's the plains, which are more like grass, cactus grassy, and hills, grassy hills, grassy hills, and the hills rivers and, and the. And the you know, maybe it's not about the trees. Maybe it's I just don't like Horizon. Shit. But I'm you're allowed to not now. like Horizon. No, no, no. Because I, I mean, it. I'm going to disagree and say you didn't play enough of that game to decide if you liked but it or not. But that's the problem. However, you're allowed to say you don't like it. Just like I'm allowed to say I don't like Pokemon or I don't like Smash, right? Or Resident Evil. Right? Well, Resident well, Evil I can't say because I well, haven't played enough I mean, of that OG to make a definitive... One. Oh yeah, decision. OG. No, I just don't not. like being scared, and that game scares yeah. you. It's <laughs> designed. No, it's literally designed to scare you. I fundamentally um, or I do not like the 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 core base of yeah. foundation of. This I don't game. like not having enough bullets, not being mm-hmm. able to get enough health, not being able to move fast enough, which is literally like the core tenets of how the gameplay in that game yeah. works. And so exactly. you know, it's but, interesting, yeah, because I'm thinking about Horizon. When I think about the trees in Horizon, it's just all like green lush. And I know that's not the case in the part I played. And it's just one, it's literally just one biome in Horizon. There's like, and the biomes in Horizon are wildly different so Horizon, than they are. Like Red Dead is like yeah. one world. So Horizon yeah. kind of is the same thing with Odyssey. It's really, I found the characters extremely interesting. I was very involved, interested in the story. I wanted to see where it was going. But then as soon as I got control, I just lost it. I don't know, like machines and games and trees, whatever. But th- those aren't things that interest me. I like the vast openness of like Red Dead where you have like, like you said, you know, there are a lot of trees, but you have different kinds of terrain all throughout. And I know that is also the case for Horizon, but I feel like I put enough time into that game. Where I'm like, ah. if it, you can, if you didn't get past the tree level of the Nora lands, you didn't put nearly enough time into that game. Well, I don't that, know. The Nora lands is one of like seven biomes in that game. Right. 
And so I know what I did do, and this is what I tend to do in games like that, is I explore, and the chances are I probably spent too much time in the tree land, in the tree biome. Like, this is, where are we going with this? And, yeah. I also think because Horizon has more of, like, a level gate on it, than mm-hmm. Red Dead does that might be like because so but she there is no leave. leveling in Red Dead right there's no That's like level saying. progression I'm saying so yeah. she like doesn't need to stay in tree land in Red Dead mm-hmm. she could just leave and go to like a different area that looks different mm-hmm. but it's harder to do that in Horizon because you'll get your ass beat that's my point. So, mm. like, she would be locked to the tree lane. Right. It's like more, like a more traditional RPG. Yeah, that yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I don't know. I'm trying to think of reasons why. Well, this no, yeah, no, like, and the, the, this is an interesting case study, though, to be like, what is it about the mechanics of the game mm-hmm. that just doesn't jive with you that you're having trouble communicating? We're gonna we're gonna suss this out eventually, <laughs> Brittany. We're also, gonna figure it out. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of trees in Red Dead. That's not wrong. But there's also the western towns. There's all and there's all those other things that just like majestic horse butts. Majestic horse butts that really bring me in. But no, we'll, we'll we'll figure this out. We'll we'll get to the bottom of it. Just no, it's a certainly a game. game that I enjoyed playing and want to spend more time in. Um, after our brief experience with Red Dead Online, I have a feeling that's probably never going to be for me. Sure. Um, but yeah. like the main campaign of Red Dead is really obviously very well done, won a bunch of awards deservedly, and is clearly one of the best video games ever created for a variety of reasons. But um, is there anything else about that game that you want to make sure people know about why it's your personal favorite? No, I think I covered it. Just like fishing simulator of the year fishing simulator of the year let's go <laughs> let's do this my favorite game ever <laughs> gotta get Smart all those lures. um <laughs> so i'm with steimer that my personal game of the year is also god of war i knew instantly when i played that game that it was going to be and i was like the bar has been set so high it's going to be really tough for another game to topple it and, and nothing did mm-hmm. and there's been so many amazing games this year i thought assassin's creed was going to get there but there was just enough things about that game that I would have tweaked. Mm. Um, and when I finished and rolled credits on on God of War and like, you know, kind of got dumped back out into the open world, I was just like, this game really was perfect in so many ways. And I, I had an argument with my a friend of mine at the Game Awards because he just did not like God of War. And I just could oh. not understand. I was like, explain to me what is it that you hate about the game? Because I'm trying to like, I can't, I don't get it because the game was so good. Um, and I think what was really impactful for me was that even though I had played previous God of War games, none of them really stuck with me, mostly because, like you, Steimer, I didn't like Kratos as a character. Yeah. I thought that he was a bad dude and he had shitty motivations that they kept, you know, kind of like, like twisting one throughout mm-hmm. every inter- iteration. And there was just a lot about it uh, narratively that I just couldn't stand by as a franchise. And I think a lot of people were in that camp previously before this reboot but seeing what Corey and the rest of the team at sony santa monica did narratively with this game which is why i kind of like was such a bummer they didn't win the best narrative category um who did again red, red dead, dead. Oh, okay was again, like, come I can't, on I can't of all the games that. in that category red dead was the least deserving in my personal opinion but i digress um i can't i don't know yet what I <laughs> to yeah, be- what I loved about what they did was that they made you care about this character who's really a true embodiment of an antihero. And we get so few of those Definitely that are true. well done in gaming to the point where you actually do want to root for them despite the fact that they're not like a good person at their core. He clearly has a good heart in a lot of ways, but he also did a lot of really a lot bad of very things. selfish things. Yeah. Right, and he but he has that remorse and the way they build that remorse and how he's kind of trying to come back from that and show his son that he can have a better life and he should be a better man is such an amazing powerful story to, for them to tell. Yeah, and I also really liked um just some of the some of basically like the Kratos Pop, Papa Kratos and all of his like <laughs> gems of wisdom like uh-huh. that he throws out some of his lines like I really kind of do want to get something cross stitch that says don't be sorry be, be better, better. Mm-hmm. one There's, of the best lines that's yeah. really good yeah. there was another one toward the end that I've now forgotten but basically it's like Boy. revenge will not give you what you see or something will not bring you what you seek like it's not good what what you're the path you're on right now isn't going to bring you any satisfaction mm-hmm. and I'm so upset that I can't mm-hmm. remember the exact line right now because it was really good but I, Papa can, I can try to look for some quotes yeah but I just want yeah exactly I want some Papa Kratos wisdom, wisdom. tidbits tidbits yeah like just and the little. thing yeah the thing that I, the really kind of stuck out with me about that game in addition to the narrative which of course you know we've talked about ad nauseum is that how well balanced the combat felt Mm -hmm. that somebody like me who isn't looking for the most Mm -hmm. difficult combat experience can enjoy 
the difficulty level that I want. <laughs> I'm laughing because of the wolves. I'm laughing also because <laughs> of the wolves. <laughs> Those motherfucking wolves. It, 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 was, it just felt the progression of how powerful Kratos became throughout the story felt so balanced. And so many times in games it doesn't. It's either way too difficult at the beginning and way too easy at the end. Mm -hmm. Or you have to pay a lot of in-game currency to yeah. boost yourself up. Or you have to sacrifice something in the scale tree because you want this power over here. But you really want this play style instead. I feel like you're always having to make choices and sacrifices in a lot of combat RPGs. And you didn't have to in this game in a, in a way that felt exclusionary. Like I didn't think that I was leaving something on the table because I made the choice to upgrade this specific armor mm -hmm. set or yeah. upgrade, you know, the blades in this specific way. It felt like I could play the way I wanted and I wasn't missing out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how everybody else's experience was with that, but it felt so good in a way that I don't get from a lot of other games. Like it was so satisfying and, and like, that's why even though I didn't grind all the way through Niflheim, but I, I never would have mm -mm. gone through the grind fest that is Niflheim to get all of the missed echoes because I just don't enjoy that kind of repetitive nature, but they made the combat so much fun that I just wanted to keep going back to experience it. Did you ever get the Valkyrie queen? Never actually took her down, but I haven't gone back. I haven't booted up that game in a while yeah. to try, but I feel like now if I do, I have to like you have to do practice before. with some other yeah. people <laughs> first for a while. Yeah, right, I'll hop back um, into that. yeah because I'm, I'll be real rusty. But mm -hmm. the way that they incorporated Atreus as a combat mechanic throughout <sighs> the story and how you could upgrade him and really utilize him and, and the kind of strategy you would have to use going in with him – felt meaningful it didn't felt like he was just like tacked on yeah so, i love well, spamming actually, those arrows I, I think part of why i initially struggled in the beginning was because i wasn't really using him and so and I, again i just played it on like normal but uh those fucking those fucking wolves <laughs> 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 they're the worst I they're, hate the worst. they're terrible i was like <laughs> i hate you die and then they would always i don't know how they would kill me more than like some of the other shit yeah. but for whatever reason wolves i don't know um and then when I start, I definitely, once I got into the groove and I was like using Atreus a lot more, I was like, ah, ah, oops. Yeah. Speaking of combat, this is kind of like a Brit pet peeve, but I hate it when, I dislike it, when game developers make a game and you're supposed to be this badass like Kratos, but you feel weak in the beginning. It's like, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be a god. Don't do that. But I feel like they did a really good job at making you feel never underpowered, never weak, that you're capable of taking on these mythical beasts. Except the wolves. The wolves. Unlike JRPGs, right? Where it's like, here's a slime. Go kill a slime. Go kill a rat. And then you eventually work your way up. But in this game, they did a really great yeah, job. Yeah, they had an interesting balance with that because um, Kratos, yes, is a god, but also was living as a man for a really long time. So, like, he he's obviously still... Yeah, god in still hiding. A, he's still powerful, but he's not... He was out of practice. Not at his peak. Yeah. He had his dad bod going on, Oh, you my know? God. Oh, dad dude. bod Kratos. <laughs> Dad bod Kratos. Oh, he, needed get, he needed to get back into you know future film shape. <laughs> yes, he just needed some training time. Oh my god, but I want that good, next game so bad. Yeah, I'm just so sad. It's gonna be so, so long, long before we get the next one. <sighs> That's okay. Take your time. I yeah, know, I, I mean, know, but... if they're gonna all be masterpieces, yeah, take okay. as much time as you need. That's I mean, fine. Final Fantasy 15 took 10 years. Oh so. Jesus Christ! Well, That's... Dragon Quest 11 took longer. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. all these games, man. Kingdom Hearts 3. I want to talk about that one. That's coming out years, next year. Yo. Oh, God. Next. Yeah. That's, that's. Is that January? January yeah. 29th. What? That's right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, real talk. Are we all three going to play that? Kingdom Hearts? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try. I'm definitely going to play at least a little bit of it, see how it goes. I'm fully expecting that um, the kind of ridiculous twisty turny narrative around Sora is going to make me want to rip my head off uh -huh. but I will probably tolerate it because Disney D we, I'm just excited to explore the Disney levels yeah and yeah. be like what's going on with this land we can turn it into a little series what the fuck is going on in Kingdom Hearts 3 this week it's like a book club but oh, Kingdom yeah. Hearts Club, because none of us know what's going on. Be like, uh, nobody knows, but I explored Toy Story Land today, and it was great. Yeah. yeah. This thing happened. This character got sad, and that's No, like we'll it. definitely do, um, in early January, we'll do a most anticipated 2019 episode, yeah. for sure, where we talk oh about God, everything that so we're much. looking forward to. Oh. Because hopefully by then, there will be a couple of games that we can talk about that we can't talk about yet. 
you okay. you have a, i'll tell you about it afterwards okay i'm like what <laughs> you know? um oh but God. uh this has been this has been fun do you think that we've missed something or didn't talk about something nay, nay. i'm, I'm think sure think everybody out there listening is like, like you guys didn't mention super smash maybe next ones. year we can pull we, our patrons and I have feel them like pick we should questions or something. Or we topic. should do something like the Game Awards does, where it's like this is the cutoff date for a release for us to talk about Game of the Year discussions because Smash mm-hmm. is too late. Like, and Smash would be a next year thing, even though technically it came out this year. Yeah, yeah. Just Cause Four came out super late as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's s- several other games that have come out that super have come late, out. and there's games that we just missed, like Return of the Oberdin. Yeah. I missed Subnautica. I didn't get to play Into the Breach. Yeah. I didn't get to play mm-hmm. Dead Cells. I intentionally didn't play, but now I'm like. Somebody just was trying to convince me that it's like Celeste in the sense that I think I wouldn't like it, but that it would be really addicting and I should play it. And I'm like, I don't know. It seems way more Metroidvania than Celeste was. Dead Cells is a game that I would totally fucking love. I just need to get it on my Switch because that's where I would want to play that style Mm -hmm. game. I wouldn't want to play that on my PS4 or my Xbox. But Switch, yes. Because I do really enjoy that style game. Yeah. I find it very fun. Hollow Knight also got to play. So there's lots of games. There's lots. 2018. Down in history is one of the best years for video games ever, I would say. Oh, yeah. They had a lot so of really, good. really great things. Yeah. And I, I think it was sort of a bummer for those that were still really good, but kind of like just mm. Spider-Man, for instance. Yeah. Spider-Man, great. Also, a fucking yeah. a phenomenal Spider-Man game. Yeah. yeah. And the way that they nailed the story and like all the relationships and all the characters and the mm-hmm. way they were portrayed and oh, my God, swinging around in that city is so fun. Um, so like they did everything they could have done to make you a perfect Spider-Man game and kind of nailed it, but, but still just God like, of War and Red because Dead, there man. was so much. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? They're sitting back there counting their money from becoming the so, number one PlayStation exclusive game of all time. I'm sure they're a little salty, but don't forget, we've got the Game Developers Choice Awards and the Dice Awards still to come in the early part of next year, which are both peer voted. So I have a feeling that we're going to see yeah. a, a shake up in those categories yeah. because they're peer voted. And not that Red Dead wasn't amazing and didn't deserve to win some of the categories at won, but I think we all agree that Spider-Man got shut out unfairly yeah. and that it deserved some love in, sus- in at least one of those categories, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. So um, we'll have to wait and see about what, what happens with that. But like, I think about even like Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and how they reinvented what they were doing with that franchise and how it still came out number one selling game of the year is Call of Duty. Um, yep. Shocking no one. Fortnite uh-huh. having a monster year, even though it technically was not released this year. Um, and even a game um, like like a Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I thought was a really well done game, but yeah. just kind of like slipped under the rug in the wake of, of Spider-Man. You know, I think everything really else was too new and different or like they all had like the, sh- the shinier cars were there. Right. Yeah. Uh, whereas Tomb Raider is a solid game. And if you like Tomb Raider, you would like this game. But it wasn't exciting to talk about in that mm-hmm. sense right. because there wasn't it was Tomb Raider. There wasn't a lot yeah. to add to mm-hmm. the conversation because yeah, they kind of upgraded some things, but like one of the you put mud yeah. on yourself. Cool. I mean, like I don't really, know, like if you release your game, like <laughs> you put the mud on yourself. <laughs> I totally Sorry. missed that. <laughs> I love you, Cyber. Don't ever change. But yeah, I mean, if you release your game around the time of year where you're getting a Rockstar Red Dead Redemption or a brand new God of War game, it's just, ugh, I just, you know, it's it's sad because those games are so great, like we've been saying, but there is just no way. I don't think they were going to be good enough to yeah. win the yeah. categories. Yeah. Also, Monster Hunter, why the hell did that win RPG? Well, now that I've been talking about it this whole episode, I'm like, oh, yeah. RPG mechanics were real in that game. And it was good. It just isn't a traditional RPG because it's so much more focused on combat than narrative. And most RPGs are more narrative heavy, right? And the combat's just there to kind of like move the narrative forward. I know. You're not wrong. And I'm so salty about that, that game because it never worked for me. Well, <laughs> well that's right. <laughs> it kept crashing my I, Xbox. You had some problems with your I just That was just such it. a random yeah, bug. I know. But I I don't I I switched. I went over and, and restarted it on PlayStation. So if you ever want to go back. Let me know, but I think I'm gonna move forward because <laughs> like not, next year is not a bad call. But like just coming off of what you were saying, like that category, that RPG category, any of those games could have won. I know. You know, I would like to have seen a turn-based game win, just for my own personal fangirlisms. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's I, we haven't talked about Octopath. Granted, it's, I don't think it necessarily deserves any like goatee things, but I do think it was like a really interesting, mm-hmm. charming game. That game, I feel like. 
would have been up for maybe more awards or won more awards in certain categories. Obviously, it wasn't going to win Game of the Year or anything. If right. it had tied in that story better. If, if, the, if they right? had tied the characters together better, mm-hmm. it would have been a contender. But yeah, I think that they just kind of missed the mark of like each one of the stories is a little bit too separate. And like it, ma- it makes it difficult to re- really want to re-engage yeah. for me anyway because I'm like, I don't like most of these stories. And unless like you get... S- some interesting shit happening. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, it's not this grand adventure you spend, you know, 80 hours plus with right. like all these characters that they grow and develop and interact because they're also interesting. That I think that dynamic would have been really great, but that just didn't happen. But that was an awesome game and I love it. It's beautiful. I, I think the art, I loved the art yeah. of that game and the lighting in that game was really, really beautiful. Oh, RPGs. So good. So mm-hmm. many great games. Now I just want to go play some video games right now. And mm-hmm. Next year, man. Well, we hope that you guys enjoyed the uh, What's Good Game Awards 2018. You picked your own favorites from our categories. If you have some that stood out to you or a game that you think that we missed that we should definitely go back and try to play or put it in our uh, our pile of shame, mm-hmm. uh, let us know in the comments below or in, on our Patreon page. Tweet to us, What's Good underscore games. Um, and we look forward to bringing you guys more conversations about fantastic games because boy oh boy 2019 is shaped up to be another incredible year thank you so much for being part of our amazing community we love you guys and we'll see you next time bye